Hello, everyone. My name is Lin Zhu. My supervisor is Dr. Jim Chen. We are from Northeastern University. Our presentation today is about the Businesque modeling of the combined storm surge and waves over wetlands forced by wind. This is a collaborative work with Dr. Feng Yanshi from University of Delaware and Dr. Steve Brandt from Louisiana State University. First of all, I would like to share with you a photo taken in Upper Taliban Bay, Louisiana, during a tropical storm. As you can see in the photo, the energetic waves are hitting hardly the shoreline. The marshland serves as a buffer zone between the ocean and the interlands. Um, it can attenuate the wave heights uh, by exerting instantaneous drag force to the waves and also uh, suppress the increase of the mean water level by exerting phase average the drag force to the water column. The objective of this study is twofold. One is to investigate the momentum and energy balance in search wave vegetation interactions using Boosie Desk Wave Model, which is the extended front wave TVD. The other is to investigate the contributions of the vegetal drag force due to the wave and current interaction. This is a sketch showing the cross shore variation of the mean water level and the mechanism behind it. The wind blowing from the seaward side introduced onshore oriented wind shear stress and surge current. The vegetation introduced uh, offshore oriented face averaged vegetal drag. The bottom shear stress is also pointing offshore direction. The breaking waves transfer momentum to the water column and the force related to the radiation stress gradient point onshore direction. All these forces affect the mean water level change. At the bottom are the cross shore momentum balance equation and the energy balance equation. The red terms are source terms uh, causing the increase of the mean water level and wave heights. The red green terms are the sink terms causing the decrease of the mean water level and wave heights. Among them, the vegetal drag force and the vegetation induced energy dissipation rate plays a significant role. They are the focus of this study. The phase average, the vegetation induced drag force and energy dissipation rate are expressed in the formulas here. In presence of storm surge, the velocity is the summation of wave orbital velocity and the surge current. The vegetal drag force can be partitioned into three parts. The first part is due to the pure wave motion. It can be computed using the wave orbital velocity. The second part is the surge is due to the surge current and can be computed using the surge current velocity. And the third part is due to the wave surge interactions and it's computed by subtracting the total uh, vegetal drag force with the first two parts. In a similar way, the vegetation induced energy dissipation rate can be partitioned into three components too. The numerical tool used in this study is the extended front wave TVD. Front wave TVD is the TVD version of the fully nonlinear Businesque wave model of front wave. And uh, in this work, we extend the front wave TVD by adding the vegetation formula from Ch Chakrabati 2017. Uh, two scenarios are simulated. One is pure wave in presence of vegetation, and the other is the storm surge wave and vegetation interaction. The front wave TVD results, such as the time series of the reference velocity and surface elevation are post-processed to compute the momentum terms and energy terms. This panel here shows the model set up for the first scenario. The vegetation properties and the wave characteristics are listed in the table. The bottom two panels show the wave height and mean water level. The modeled results are shown in blue and the theoretical solutions are shown in red. First, for the wave height, the modeled results and the theoretical solution based on linear wave theory, they match well. 
And uh, in terms of the mean water level, the modeled results are in presence of vegetation and the theoretical solution are without vegetation. So it shows that the vegetation suppress the increase of the mean water level. This figure here shows the momentum terms and the balance of these terms. The lines and the equations have the same color code. The orange line is the summation of all these momentum terms. Before entering the vegetation, there are oscillations in the orange line that's due to the downstream reflection. And in the vegetation area, the momentums are nearly balanced out. Let's move on to the second scenario. The first panel shows the model setup. We have two sets of vegetation zones in the computational domain. The uh, wave characteristics and wind condition is listed in the table. We have wind speed of 40 meter per second and drag coefficient of 0.0069. This is corresponding to category one hurricane wave with speed of 31 meter per second. The following two panels are the modeled wave height and wind shear stress. The bottom panel is the mean water level normalized by the incident wave height. The blue line shows the model results and the black dashed line is the theoretical solution in absence of vegetation. So again, it clearly shows that the vegetation can suppress the increase of the mean water level. We put two stations in the computational domain. One is before entering the vegetation area and the second is in the middle of the vegetation zone. The bottom two panels show the time series of the reference velocity. We selected two time intervals to check the momentum and energy balance. The first time interval is before reaching the stationary state, and the second time interval is after reaching the stationary state. These two panels here show the momentum terms and the balance of these terms over the two time intervals. The lines and the momentum terms in the equation have the same color code. The orange line is the summation of all these momentum terms. The orange line is almost a zero, showing that the momentum terms are balanced out. These two panels show the energy terms and the balance of these terms over the two selected time interval. The lines and the terms have the same color code again, and the orange line is the summation of all the energy terms. The orange line is almost zero, showing that the energy is also balanced out. In order to investigate the effects of the wave current interaction on the vegetal drag force and the, the energy dissipation rate, we partition them into three components. This figure here shows the components over the first selected time interval. The first panel is the mean velocity, and the bottom two panels are the phase average, the vegetal drag, and the energy dissipation rate, respectively. In the second panel, the green line is the total phase average, the vegetal drag. The red is the component due to the pure wave motion. The blue is the component due to current, and the black is the component due to the wave current interaction. It's clearly showing that the component due to pure wave motion and current wave interaction are the two major components in the phase averaged drag force. If we neglect either of these two components, we would end up underestimating the phase averaged vegetal drag and uh, overestimating the surge in presence of vegetation. The numerical results also show that Although it is convenient to compute the phase average, the vegetal drag, and the energy dissipation rate using the reference velocity, it's not accurate enough. These two panels here show the phase average, the vegetal drag, and the vegetation-induced energy dissipation rate using the full expression as in Chakrabarti's paper and the simplified formula using the reference velocity. The differences between the solid green line and the dashed green line are relatively large, 
if we use the simplified formula in the momentum and energy balance checkout, we would end up with unbalanced energy and momentum. So in summary, in the momentum balance, the offshore-oriented phase-averaged vegetal drag offsets the onshore-oriented radiation stress gradient and wind shear stress. For Bucinex models, we should use the full expression as in Chakrabarty's paper to compute the vegetal drag and energy dissipation rate. It is not accurate to compute these two variables using the reference velocity in the quadratic law. The vegetal drag force due to the pure wave motion can significantly uh, reduce the wave setup, and the vegetal drag due to the wave current interaction can take up a significant portion of the uh, total vegetal drag. The existing storm surge models only involve the vegetal drag due to the current velocity, and therefore it would overestimate the storm surge. It is very important to include the vegetal drag due to pure wave motion and the wave current interactions in the modeling of storm surge, it would improve the um, model performance in vegetated shoreline. Thank you. This work is financially supported by the US National Science Foundation. And we would also thank Dr. Jafari for providing the photo in Upper Terrebonne Bay. Thank you again.